Jesus elucidates. Matthew 18, verses 15 to 35. About forgiveness and the parable of the wicked servant. Chapter 248 About Forgiveness According to Matthew 18, verses 15 to 22 The Lord says, Outside Peter's house, a rather audible squabble ensued between some fishermen returning home, and Peter thought it best for us to go out to meet them and settle the argument. Said I, Yes, you do that. It is a good work indeed to settle quarrels amongst men, so their anger may subside. For anger is a spawn of hell, contaminating the heart and shrouding the soul in darkness for years. So then, go out and settle the argument. At this point, Peter strut outside and inquired of the two still arguing outside his house what the matter was, what sparked this argument in the first place. One of them responded, the somewhat calmer of the two, saying that a servant of a citizen from the city, who had no fishing right and was standing there in their midst, had fished at one of the best fishing spots. He made a rich catch, and they, as the properly authorized fishermen, caught him there, chastised him and took away his catch, according to their rights. And yet the servant opposed them and sought to prove to them in a most crude manner that he too had the right to fish wherever he wanted. However, he had no license, merely claiming to have the right, something they could not and would not tolerate. When Peter heard this, he said, The man is indeed a thief, but nevertheless, let him go. Should he dare to commit this offense again, only then may you hand him over to the authorities. For you yourselves know that we must forgive our enemies seven times over, according to the law. The fisherman said, still firmly detaining the fish thief, But we already have forgiven him his offense seven times over, and nowhere is it mentioned in the law that we must forgive him an eighth time, and so we wish to take him to court. said Peter, Indeed, you may have the right to do so, but for my sake, do the right thing here and forgive him this latest offense as well, even though it is already the eighth one. However, should you catch him a ninth time, then you may exercise your right on him. In response to these words, they let the thief go, after he had promised them he would never again commit this offense. And thus, the argument was settled, and the participants calmly returned to their homes. Upon Peter's return to us, he said, Lord and Master, I may have succeeded in persuading my neighbors to overlook the fish thief's transgression for an eighth time, thereby settling the argument. But legally speaking, by the eighth repeat offense, it would be necessary to hand him over to the authorities. Indeed, it would also be nice of you, O oh Lord, if you would explain to us the laws of Moses more clearly, that is, in the context of this earthly law sector, especially nowadays when even the laws of Rome have begun to severely encroach upon and interfere with the Jewish lifestyle. For no one really knows anymore whether to adhere more to the laws of Moses or to the laws of Rome. In some respects, the Roman law is certainly more humane than Moses's, which, in many cases, can no longer be used as a state law in a literal sense. So, Lord, what would be the correct course of action according to your greatest love and wisdom? Said I, I know that things are as such now, that it is difficult for a judge to decide between the two laws and to determine how and when one man has sinned against another. For example, the one law approves of something which, according to the other law, is considered a sin. In order to impart to all of you a decree, 
and through you to everyone else, to which all must adhere. Remember this and write it down. Should a brother of yours sin against you, go and reprove him in private, calmly asking of him not to do so again. Should he listen to you and comply with your request, you will have already won with your brother. But should he not listen to you, take with you one or two witnesses, according to the nature of the sin committed against you, so that by the testimony of two or even three witnesses, the state of affairs may be confirmed. Should the offender refuse to listen, even in the presence of witnesses you brought with you, bring this to the attention of the community he belongs to, together with your witnesses. Should he remain stubborn, even when faced with the community, let him be declared and treated as a Gentile and tax collector by you, the witnesses, and the community. May this be enough for you and everyone else. Anything beyond this originates from evil, creating even greater evil as a result. This decree is taken from my divine order and does not merely apply here, but in the great beyond as well. For truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. In addition, I tell you this, so you may even more easily settle all arguments and hardship upon this earth. If just two of you agree on what to ask of the Father in my name, then it shall indeed be granted to them by my Father, in heaven and thus upon earth as well. And so, should someone have sinned against you, forgive him wholeheartedly and ask the Father in my name to set straight the sinner's heart. The effectiveness of this plea depends on the degree of your faith and the forgiveness you offered him who sinned against you. Again, I tell you, where two or three gather in my name, in concern of a matter both good and within my order, there I am in their midst, in spirit and I will heed whatever they ask of me. I believe with this decree I have now given you, you and everyone else will easily come to terms with all possible critical life conditions, as well as the thousands upon thousands of contradictory laws this world imposes upon you. At this point, Peter once again came up to me and said, Lord, that is all good and true, and it goes without saying that we will certainly actively observe your designations and entrust them to others for their personal consideration as well. But it all comes down to one critical question, and it goes like this. How often shall I, or another, forgive a brother who has sinned against us? Up to seven times is enough, according to the law of Moses. said I, if it must happen according to a certain number, then Moses' number seven is far too little. Instead, seventy times seven must it happen. For therein consists the kingdom of heaven. There be the same love, harmony, and forgiveness amongst men as they prevail amongst my angels in heaven, some of whom you have already met. Chapter 249 The Parable of the Wicked Servant Matthew 18, verses 23 to 35 The Lord Now, in order to properly and more clearly illustrate to you the kingdom of heaven, I will describe it to you in a corresponding parable. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold, with his wife and children and all that he had, and that payment be made. 
when the servant saw that he was now sold as a slave, together with his family, he fell down before the king, still present, and worshipped him, weeping and saying, O great and mightiest king and lord, have patience with me a little longer. Cancel the sale of me and my family. Let me go free just a little while longer, and I will do my utmost to pay you back in full. When the king heard this, his heart softened. He was sorry for the servant and cancelled the entire sale, acquitted the servant of his debt and set him free. Soon thereafter, the newly freed servant went out into the king's city, where he had many things to do and tell. And behold, he met one of his fellow servants, who had recently come to owe him a hundred pennies. When his fellow servant caught sight of him, he asked him for just a little leniency, and he would pay off the debt. But our servant, so estimably pardoned by the king, would not listen to him, instead seizing him with fury choking him and shouting, Pay what you owe me at once, for I have waited a long time, and my patience has come to an end. The fellow servant fell down once again and pleaded with tears, Have but a little more patience with me, and I will pay you back all of it. But the king's servant would have no more patience for he had the poor fellow servant seized by the henchmen and thrown into prison until the entire debt was paid off with his confiscated earnings. However, some of the other servants witnessed all that transpired between the two, severely aggrieved and angry with the king's servant, so very relentless and cruel. And so they went ahead and notified the king of all that happened. When the king learned of all this, without hesitation he summoned the cruel servant and spoke to him with a furious countenance. Hear me, you wicked servant. Have I not forgiven you your entire debt because you asked me to? Why did you not have mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? The servant was dumbstruck with fright and fear, for he saw how good and just the king was, and that he would severely chastise the wicked by his mercy and love. Thereupon the king grew truly furious and handed the merciless servant over to his equally merciless tormentors, until the entire debt was paid off with his confiscated earnings. And behold! My heavenly Father will do the same unto you, should you not, with all your heart, forgive your fellow men the sins and faults they have committed against you. And exactly therein consists the true kingdom of heaven, in the greatest as well as the smallest, that there be no enmity, envy, or even hatred among the blessed, and instead the greatest harmony, unity, and mutual love. For this very reason, there is no need for a court of protection in this world to determine the law between the offenders and the offended. For your sole court of protection before me must be your good and conciliatory heart. And you will emerge from this court well, with the fewest expenses and judicial costs. And he who sinned against you will become your friend in truth much sooner than if he had been compelled to do so by a judicial sentence. And now tell me whether you have fundamentally understood all this well. 